Hey, folks, it's Frithgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on the Hagenstead map. Let's get back to reliving the glory days. But I think I'm going to need to use the, um, the wagon as well. The, uh, the, the overload. It, what's it called? Auger wagon. The auger wagon. Think of the name for a minute. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to have to use the auger wagon as well. I don't think we're going to be able to do this without it. So I was wondering about maybe just using the truck to drive up and down and go and take it directly from the combines, but I don't think I'm going to be able to drive around it fast enough to do that. So we'll do it like this. And this field here, this is going to be quick and easy to take this one out bring you up through there if I do one more pass along the sort of the bottom side of this field I can have just our bog standard hired help in here bring you on round again and yeah you can go in there like that it goes in along the bottom that'll do it we're going to get a full tank of grain off of here. That's 10,500 litres of corn coming off of this. Um, yes, I know that there is a mod that I can use that notifies me when there's a good price for grain coming up. A uh, couple people have said about this one now. does look really good. I have taken it on board and have also forgotten to get it actually installed. Um, but I do remember you talking about it, if that's any consolation. So, yes, I have seen it. Let me set the hide help on there. Uh, if we have a look in here a minute, we've got corn in there. At the moment, we've got 1,347 in there. And let me have a look at my price list. Uh, corn. That's canola. The best price I've seen for corn is 1,546. So if we take it down by 150 off of that, that's 1,400. We're not quite on there. Everything is dropping at the moment on those corn prices. That's at the restaurant there. So we are 50 euros below the best price that I've seen, and its price is dropping. I might leave it, actually, just for once. I might actually leave that, and we'll will store the grain rather than trying to sell it, I think, just for once. We don't normally do that. We have been selling straight off the field, but I think this time we're going to put it in storage and we're going to wait for a better price. And then when we get our better price, because we don't, we're not strapped for cash. We've got 42,000 euros at the moment. That'll easily cover all planting costs. We don't need to lease anything yet to be able to go and do our... Um, bit of stuff with the, 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 the who's we call it, with, with the sugar beet, because the sugar beet we can plant with those planters that we've got in the shed over there, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, all we've got to have is the money available for leasing the harvesters when the time comes. And with our solar panels that we got lined up, we have got the money for that. And then once we've got those, we'll then be able to go and buy another solar panel. We get solar panel number eight lined up there. So we get one for every field. Which means that we will, like, things are going to speed up a little bit more. Which means that we can progress faster. We can get upgrade towards our bigger machinery just that little bit more quickly. Which I kind of like, actually. Um, and, you know, it's, it's been nice kind of building up the smaller scale stuff now, but it, it would be nice to now start getting that push. There's always a point. It doesn't matter how you play the game. You can play the game with, you know, playing a little bit cheaty, kind of, if that's really how you want to describe how I play the game. Um, uh, and yeah, I, it, it, if, it's a little, if, if, you, if you feel the need to say it's a little bit cheaty, then we'll call it a little bit cheaty. Um, so... I kind of got, you know, I'm playing it like this. This is uh, my play style. And whether you're doing it like this or whether you're doing it like I am on the Hardcore series, there always comes a point where you suddenly start getting flooded with money and you're able to go and afford everything that you wanted. Like all of the nice toys. And we're fast approaching the point where we'll be able to get all of the nice toys. 
Am I going to fit everything in this combine? I don't think so. I think it would be close, but I don't think it's actually going to fit everything in. I think I'm going to have to just go up here and take a little tiny bit off just in order for it to fully clap. There we go. Right. He's already putting the spout out for us. He's going to put it away again now as he comes back over there. I mean, he might get down to the end of the fields. The speed he's going. I only need to take a little bit. Just a couple thousand leases there. That's, that's more than enough. I don't need to take anything else. Have that over there. And the other combine has already turned around. I didn't want him to do that. You know what? We'll leave that. I'll bring you back around. Help F has completed their task. I didn't want him to do this. I wanted him to take one single pass along the top end of the field up here. And then I wanted him to start whizzing off down across the field from that side. And there's enough room then for him to turn around. He'll have everything sorted. So I'm going to just take a pass along here. I'll also go and take a pass along the top of the smaller field. And then I will put him back over this side and we can carry on. I'll then get the other combine unloading. And we may even be able to get back to our other tractor. It does look like... The combine, uh, sorry, the truck is going to just be able to keep up nicely with the combines. At least at the moment. I mean, with these two, it, it shouldn't be any kind of a problem. I mean, maybe later on we will get an auger wagon and then we have the truck doing it sometimes. And then when the truck is off unloading, we use the auger wagon to unload the combines. And then when the truck comes back, then the truck sort of takes over the job I've always done it with two combines you can do it with three combines but I have found that it's quite difficult to keep three combines moving that's always seems to be the main struggle is actually keeping the three combines going two you can keep up with um, even if you have the combines moving a lot faster than normal I still find it easier to have two combines that are much more unrealistic with speed and capacity than it is to have three combines with lower speed and capacities. It always seems to be easier to keep up with the the, the first uh, type. Right, I'll take you a minute. It always seems to be easier to keep up with the ones that don't... Um, with, with, with fewer number of combines. It doesn't really matter how fast they go. It doesn't matter about stuff like that like they, they could go at blistering speeds across the field and you have three combines that go at half the speed and it's still generally easier to keep up with the two than it is with the three um just the way it is i is i guess it's just because of the extra leg work that you've got to do even if you do have them in the same field you've still got to travel from one to the other and it, it just yeah makes it a little bit more difficult right i know that in there I don't think we've done too bad, actually. Uh, we've got that. There's 10,500 in this combine tank. It's just about one full tank. And that's the last crop off of that field. That field is now done. We are never using it again as an actual field. We're going to be using it for something else. The first thing we're going to be using it for, it, well, the main thing that we're going to be using it for is putting root crop storage silos down. I've got a root crop storage, storage silo that we can use. I think it only holds about 300,000 though, so I may need to just tweak the numbers a little bit because if we do have a crop, a uh, root crop off of any of the fields here and we ultimately decide to, let's just scroll back through a minute, uh, here, 10,350. We could have fit everything into one combine. Um, oh, here we go with the lorry, with the noise. Oh, yeah. Wait for it. <laughs> oh, I never get tired of that. Um, yeah, if we decide at any point that we're going to keep root crops in storage for a, a period, if the, if the prices aren't very good, uh, 
we're going to be wanting an awful lot of root crops. Now, silos at the moment I've got, it's this one here that I was thinking of. It takes 300,000. I'll be honest, we're going to want a lot more than that. Now, these are 500,000. We can put root crops in them. We've got these silos here. They're a quarter of a million each. The main silo here. It doesn't matter which one we take. They're only half a million each, and its extensions aren't all that big. I was kind of thinking that I would go with these, but what I would ultimately do is expand it and ho have them holding a million litres each. Because otherwise, I just don't think we're going to be able to fit enough of them in. I, I, I really don't. I don't think there's going to be enough room for them. Okay, so the combines are moving. Next, we're going to get going with this one, and yeah, I'm going to start off with our new field. We've got our new field over there. The grass will have been grown. The grass will have grown by now. If it hasn't, I will be very surprised. So we go round this way. We test out the new bits of road that we went and built. Looking good. Wouldn't really matter if we went this way. I think it would probably be slightly quicker, actually, to go the other way rather than up here because it's a bit of a steep hill coming up here. We've got this climb. But it's a scenic route, and it's something slightly different. That is a big old field of potatoes up there. Kind of glad I'm not doing that field of potatoes today. Although, I guess we could go and lease a whole load of machinery, so it wouldn't really matter. Now, I'm just going to unfold that mower there, so he's ready, and we'll start unfolding this mower in just a second. Here we go. Now that we're down here, we can unfold this one. We've got a full crop of grass here on this field, which is fan schmastic news. And we can fire these two up. So fire that one and fire that one. And then you go control V and it lowers both mowers down one after the other. Like that. And off I go and I miss the bit out on the end. And that bit of grass that I had, that I was um that I kind of went and planted myself with the landscaping, that does actually end up turning into the same grass that we've gone and planted in our field which is good I was wondering about that whether it would sort of turn out to be the same one I'm quite pleased that it has so we can just kind of like extend our mowing out this way a little bit and it's kind of up to us where we drive out on this side and then we go in round here and we go up tight next to the rail like this and this one doesn't have any tip on the actual side of the railway. We couldn't, there's no, uh, is it tip collision? I can't, I can't remember what it's called. Um, but we're basically, we can't tip anything out there. So the mower is unloading it there, like a little bit to a time. It can't dump everything all at once. And that's because we're so close to the rail there. If we were a bit further away, it would do a better job. So we go, we'll have to keep that in mind for the future. Like, we, we can't really go and um, do much mowing over on that side. Uh, I need control V here to lift these up. That's what I'm meant to do. I'll do another pass all the way around. Control V, lock those back down again, and then I can leave the hired help working on this field, and then we can work our way back through the other two. Once this is done, we'll be able to get the rake, uh, not the rake, the the hay turner going in here. It was left a little tiny strip out on this corner. Whether I should do that now or tidy that one up later. I'll get that now. So we go in here with control V like that and then I just press V to operate only the front one so I always have the front one selected because if I need to do a little tiny bit I just use the front mower and then if I want to use both of them together you just press the control button as well and then it will raise and lower both of them. In theory it's supposed to also work for turning them on and off but it never seems to actually work the on and off option never actually seems to operate as it should so I'll uh, just bring that back in round there like that and go on up this side see I'm into the actual field now anyway so I could set the hide help going except it's going to be a little bit tight down that end so I just want to do 
one more little bit going up towards there and we can also kind of like straighten out where we're doing the mowing on the field just kind of bring it out just a little bit over like that and I'll also do this yeah yeah I'm I am too close to the rail there I got a little bit greedy with that so it's gonna end up being a bit messy so maybe we'll sort of go back and do a tidy up on that afterwards later uh, you know at a later date with the landscaping and just move it move our grass away from that track so that we're not quite so greedy with it now i think it would actually be better for us if we were to do the mowing starting from this side both of those combines are now full bring you in over here like this right uh about here i think I want to make sure that I've got enough of an overlap. So if I just kind of go like that. I'll lower that front mower down. And it'll come on up. And it'll lower the back mower down. Possibly miss a little bit at times. Uh, it's not quite straight going up through there. Okay, you can carry on. We've got that one going. The uh, plowing. We've got to deal with that at some point. We will get to it. Um... I'm going to go underneath this one and I will take the grain off of this combine and then I will drive over to the other one and that one I will just kind of like park the lorry underneath it and we can go and do just a few strips more with our plow. The bit of field over there, we're going to change that over, we're going to landscape that out but we're not going to worry about that just yet, we'll do that after we've done all the other harvesting and the planting and everything we've got that field over there sorted out uh, so when everything is done dusted and ready to roll then we will deal with uh, getting that little bit of field over that side all sorted out i don't want to go and put another root crop over in that field it was a bit of a pain to get in around the corner with the potato harvester i see no reason to suspect that it's going to be any better with the sugar beet harvester so i'd rather just leave it and not have it going um, it is a lot easier just doing it like this without the um, uh, auger wagon coming in. I mean, yes, compaction could be a bit of an issue, but honestly, I don't think we need to worry about that. Uh, we've got flotation tires on here. See? See? They're nice and wide. See those big wide tires on there? They're fine. We don't need to worry about things like um, compaction. It'll be absolutely fine. Yes, yeah, so let's, let's not trouble ourselves with such minor little details. So, I'm going to go back to you. And I'm hoping he's still set on the right setting on here. So, with this bit right here, now I'm going to plow down along this side. And then I want to use the landscaping and I'm just going to kind of round off the corner here so that we'll be able to get through with the root crop harvesters in order to be able to park them in that shed. There should be enough room to stick them in there, all four of them side by side. We get two sugar beet harvesters and we have two potato harvesters. Although the Stevie... Pot Although I would actually like to run potato harvesters, probably I'm going to end up using the Stevie um, adjusted sugar beet harvesters because of the bug that still exists in the game that I was complaining bitterly about before. If you have a look here, we go to potato technology. See, we've, these are the Stevie ones right here. Uh, 60,000, that's 90,000 litres. I think I'll go with, just go with that one. Um, reason being, when we were doing it, we were using this one. I think this is actually a Stevie one. Um, but the bug that exists in the game is this resets whenever the hired help is using it and so if you adjust it higher for a higher trailer once you set the hired help going it automatically resets it down lower it shouldn't do that it definitely that is definitely a bug there is no way that the game should be doing that we all know this but it's not something that giants have ever fixed and that is something that really really irritates me because it does break the base game um, potato harvesters as far as I'm concerned because when you're doing your potato harvesting later on you need big equipment to be able to move that and if you're doing a potato harvest realistically you're gonna be using a lot of hired help I've never seen anybody harvest 10,000 uh, 
ten thousand. All right, let's let's just go for. I've never seen anybody harvest three hundred acres of potatoes by themselves. Never seen that done. Never even heard of that being done. Like you have loads of people on the trailers. You have someone in the in the machine. So if you're running the tractor and trailer up beside it. You're not the one, in. even if you're doing it manually, when you go and start the machine up, it's still resetting the height of the machine, going up the height of the spout for the potatoes. So you can't just have your tractors run up alongside you. It's, it's resetting it, and it should not be doing that. And it really, really irritates me, the fact that that is happening. I cannot sort of emphasize this enough. It shouldn't be, and it is, and I don't like it. So that particular little bit, because of it, I'll probably end up just using one of the sugar beet harvesters because that the sugar beet harvesters, they are actually able to reach high enough to um, reach over the top of the sides of the trailers, where, whereas the potato ones aren't. They clip into the sides, and I don't like that. So we'll probably end up doing it like that. I've got a combine that is completely full, so... If I just run this down, actually, you know what, you can just stop there for a second, and we will go and take you. I will run over to that field over there, and unload that one. Literally just got to, ooh, I know what I can do. I was going to say, I'll just go and park them underneath. I was actually thinking I would take them both off but what I'll actually do then is I'll take some off of this one and then I'll spin around and I'll follow him down across the field so that we can empty this one out and then I can park the combine at the tractor the tractor, the, the lorry I can park the lorry in the trailer underneath that combine over there in just a minute right it's down to 80% then we can come out here we can spin round and we can unload this one down across the field like this there we go. So unload you down across the field, and then when we've done that, we can just go and park this one up, and then we can go and check on our tractor and mower and just make sure that one's doing all right up there, and then we can get back to plowing out our bigger, newer field over there. Get that one sorted out. Still don't know if I'm going to actually bother moving the tree that's right on the corner. It's not going to be in the way of the plows. But I still might want to remove it. Like, I got that tree over there, and I'm still humming an iron about removing that one. Like, it is kind of, I kind of want to, and I kind of don't. I don't want to, see, I, I don't like the idea of just killing every single tree that we've got on the map. At the same time, it just makes life a lot easier if the trees aren't there. Like, it, it definitely does make things easier if we can just ditch the trees, and we don't have to worry about them. It's just a bit of a pain to have to go through and... And do it. So I mean, it might be one of those sorts of trees where we leave them until we've got um, several more that we also want to go for. How are you doing? You're, you're actually doing really well. Quite pleased with your progress. You are soon going to be done and ready to go and move. But not quite yet. So we'll run back to this one. Now over here we are getting rid of all of this road, all of that bit of road, and half of that bit of road up there. So it's going to sort of be a little bit of an L-shaped field. That's not going to cause any issues, I don't think, with any of the hired help going anywhere. So you here, we'll just sort of bring you out like that. I might end up doing this as kind of a rounded edge to the field. I'm not sure yet. I don't know. We will see. I mean it should be all right doing it square so we'll we'll kind of see how the mood takes us once we've gone and done two more passes out towards that side i think two more passes would be enough maybe three this is three passes here are we gonna wanna hmm it's going right over onto the grass it might be all right that tree would definitely have to go that one down there. This one up here I don't think is going to have to go. The bit that we are going to have to do, and I'm actually going to do that now before I go and do anything else, is another little tiny bit of landscaping. We'll go in here. So, it's not anything there. It's a bit up this end. So, I want to make that a little bit bigger. That will probably be big enough. And we'll change this over to the brush bit and then I'm going to go there and uh, what I'm doing now is I've got both mouse buttons pressed down 
so that I can just level it down flat. That's all I'm doing is just kind of flattening it. I only want to bring it up to that point there, like that. I don't need to do any... There's no more needed than that. And now middle mouse button and we'll just kind of blend these bits back here a little bit. Anything extra on there. And I don't think I actually need to do anything else in here. I, I could go and, like, we've got bare patches in here. So I think we could just leave it. There's a little bit of rock there that possibly might um, look better if we were to do something different with it. Maybe just change that bit for dirt. I don't know. We'll see. Right. Helper B has completed their task. I'll just bring you around this way a second. Okay. You, you can wait there a minute. And you... There's another combine here is waiting to empty. That'll be that one down there. I'll go and chase after that one. And then we can go and move our mower into the next field. So if I can get this one now before he actually runs out. Oops, uh, runs out. Runs out of space, I guess, and before he actually fills right up. There, go along like that. 95%. Look at that. 96, and now he's empty. Um, so I'll move this one. I'll move, I'll move the tractor and the mowers over to the next field. We'll not worry about getting the big tractor, say, on the hay turner just yet. I might go and do that. I could actually put the big tractor on the hay turner and then have the smaller tractor on the rake out there in that field. And then once we've done that for a little while and we've got all of the hay turned, then the big tractor can go onto the forage wagon and start gathering it all up while the other one goes and finishes off all of the raking. Could be a way to sort of work through all of this. Uh, you over this side... I need to get my truck right in over here so that we can unload you. Actually, I don't want you to start unloading until you are combining because otherwise you will stop. I don't want you to stop. I want you to keep going. So we've only got two fields left after this. It's nice and quick. And I was wondering about a kind of intermediate upgrade after this before we go for the big ideal combine. Because obviously the ideal is kind of at the top of the range. Don't think we probably will. I think that uh, these will be alright for another couple of fields. And then um, we'll do the jump up to the Stevie ones with the big headers on them to really start getting through things a little bit faster. Um really think that we need to have an intermediate step to be honest i mean i was wondering about going for a standard ideal combine before we take the jump to the stevie ones but i don't think we really need to do that either to be honest i don't think there's going to be any real need for it uh are you going to finish that field down there before you run out of space don't know not sure about that. You've hardly got anything in, so there's no point in me emptying you out yet. I will just do this over here. There's a little tiny bit of a strip, I think, up the other end. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.